Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. I'm Jason with Fuzzlord and in this video we're going to be talking about how someone would get into building guitar effect pedals. I'm going to aim this video at a few different kinds of people and that's going to be like people that have never built something before in their life. Uh, maybe people that have built a kit or two and then folks that have kind of got the hang of the building part and they want to know where to go from there. So if that sounds interesting to you, I think you're going to want to stick around and watch this video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jason Johnson and I run Fuzzlord Effects and on this channel we do gear demos, tech talks, and then some time-lapse footage of the work being done in the shop. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure you check out some of the other videos on the channel and subscribe below. Is it this side? Is it that side? Uh, so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. If you want to keep up with me and see what else I'm up to, head on over to the Instagram page at Fuzzlord Effects and you can also stop by and say hello on Facebook or head on over to the website fuzzlordeffects.com to see what is currently available in the next upcoming pedals in the build rotation. So let's get going on this video. So I often get asked about how people would get into building their own guitar pedals, whether that just be for hobby or going uh, to start a company professionally and do this for a living. So I think maybe the easiest way to start this conversation would be for me to just give a little bit of my background on electronics and guitar effect pedal building so folks could kind of see the journey I took to get here. So probably six, seven years ago, I built my first guitar pedal kit. I already had most of my tools because I was repairing guitar electronics and doing simple like jacks and pop repair, things like that. So I bought a Baz Fuss kit and I assembled it. I believe I made a few errors my first time and I fried apart and I had to do it again. But I built a kit and the thing that you get in a kit is that someone else took the time to put together all those parts for you and the parts list and usually drill out the enclosure. The point being is that they're kind of doing a little bit of the background work for you and then giving you some instructions to make you more successful on your first build. So that's where I started off and then from there I kind of got hooked and then you can just start building your own like clones which is uh, you know, there's a bunch of different websites out there that uh, use Vero board or strip board or different kinds of like roll your own PCB kind of stuff where you just start building pedals you like. So maybe you build a fuzz face, maybe you build a tone bender, a big muff and a this and a that and you probably build 10, 20, 30 different pedals. So that's kind of how I thought like the first stage was just building the kit and getting my feet wet. From there, stage two was kind of like getting immersed in it and then every time you build a pedal you basically will make some errors or read about other people making errors and you're forced to kind of learn about why something went wrong that's mostly how you'll be learning is uh, figuring out why something went wrong from there uh, I enrolled, I was already in school going uh, and studying mathematics and science and things like that. And I decided to pursue electrical engineering at Oregon State University, where I completed my undergraduate degree in electrical slash computer engineering with a focus on analog circuit design. So I went pretty deep into it. Of course, people go to school for a lot longer than I did, but I did knuckle down to the electrical engineering program and really studied all the stuff on paper because I always wanted to know why. Uh, there's a lot of people that'll change parts and kind of play around and uh, just see what works with their ear, but I wanted to know on paper and like scientifically, mathematically, you know, how to come across these things. So I can just look at circuits, understand why they sound the way they do, I can look at circuits and uh, have a lot better of an idea of how to get from point A to B a lot more efficiently. Makes sense? So that is my background in electronics. So then when I finished school, well, it was probably about six months before I finished school, I started the Fuzzlord FX uh, brand and just really went to apply what I had learned like as a hobbyist doing kits. Um, and like modding different pedals and like repairing pedals and stuff and mix that with 
what I had learned in electrical engineering school and the skills that you learn there and decided that I wanted to start releasing fuzz pedals and uh, distortion pedals, boost pedals, all that kind of stuff. And it was really just something I was very passionate about. And I think the most important thing to keep in mind while you're doing this stuff is it's really not about the end goal. If, uh, if your end goal is that you want to, you're not going to be happy until you're designing custom effects and stuff, you're going to be pretty bummed out for a long time. So something that you really have to keep in mind, especially with something like electrical engineering is that, uh, please keep two things in mind. This is a very old profession and, uh, myself and a lot of others, you just got to keep in mind that you got to have a deep respect for everyone that came before you and all of the contributions they put into electronics. It's really hard to reinvent the wheel when you've had uh, thousands of people making really good wheels before you. So that's something to keep in mind and respect is that, uh, the big muff is a wonderful pedal. The boss, uh, SD one wonderful pedal. So the idea that you're going to, uh, not value these things is kind of working backwards, you know? So I think it's important to realize we're in a really special time where there's a lot of information available. So we have nothing but information available to us to learn from. Here's the second really important thing. I think you have to keep in mind while doing this, enjoy the journey. And I mean it, enjoy the journey because uh, it's a very long one and you're going to pick up little things all along the way. And then all of a sudden you're going to look back at a shelf behind you and realize that maybe you built three or 400 pedals in a year or something. So don't fascinate yourself with the end goal of I'm going to design the next new greatest big muff. Uh, why don't you just enjoy what you're doing while you're doing it. Let's move to the last little part of this video, which I just want to run over a few things. Let's say that you've never built a pedal before and you want to get into it. I want to go through and show you my tools that I use on the daily when I'm, when I'm wiring up pedals. Uh, it's really not much. You can get into this for relatively, a relatively affordable cost. Um, and keep in mind that these are tools and it is a skill. So it's not money wasted. Uh, I'm going to maybe talk about one kit that I think is kind of cool or just like kind of the kits that you'd be looking for and past that, I hope you all get inspired to build your own pedals and kind of keep in mind that it's going to be a mix between building clones and just getting your feet wet with it. And then also reading online as much as you can. There's a lot of good websites. I think RG Keen, is that his name? He writes a lot of good articles. There's Electro Smash, uh, but there's basically just a bunch of resources online where you could start reading about this stuff and start to understand how filters work, how gain stages work, how uh, true bypass. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Just start tackling each one of these little um, topics and really reading deeply about it. Once you decide that you're really into it, get some engineering books or, uh, follow some channels on YouTube, like Daryl Morrill is a really good one. He's got about 50 videos on a playlist that I think I've watched each video about three times through my school experience. So if you really want to get into it, the information's out there and, uh, you know, I don't think you'll regret learning it. It only opens doors. Here's my electronics bench where I do a lot of work and design. And let's just go through a couple of the basic tools. I keep a lot of my hand tools in a little uh, bag so I can take them with me when I need to work on stuff. But basically, you're not going to need many things. You're going to need some good uh, dikes or wire clippers. If you can see, they're, they're small and they're sharp. They work good to cut wire or leads on the back of PCBs. There's that. Needle nose pliers. You're going to be using these a lot. Uh, go down the store, Home Depot, Harbor Freight, wherever you go and, uh, pick them all up, get you a good pair. You're going to be using them. If you can see mine are really skinny. So that works good 
for bending component leads or grabbing wires and pushing them through um, holes and jacks, etc. These are the kind of wire strippers that I use. They're really old school and like not very high tech. You basically, they strip any size wire and you just cut through. And I've just gotten used to where, where I can just feel it and I feel it bust through the, the rubber coating and I strip it off and it stops. But you can, there's a little set screw you can move around to the different gauges. Some people like using these. They have different wire gauges, little notches on them. Uh, so that's an option. What else? I know it sounds silly, but a good set of screwdrivers, flathead and Phillips, several sizes, little mini ones, itty bitty ones, and then normal ones. Uh, I found that doing different kind of tech work, like working on guitars, working on pedals, you tend to cause so many problems by just not having the right size screwdriver. And then you strip the screws on your pick guard or your pedal or whatever it is you're working on. So really half of my bag here is just full, seriously, of different screwdrivers of every flavor that you could think of. Last thing that's kind of nice to have is a solder sucker. Let's say you dump too much solder on something, make a big mess, well it's spring loaded, you push it down, you got your big pool of solder right here, you heat it up with your iron, and then it like vacuum sucks it out. It helps to uh, amend errors. So, really? That's not that much stuff, right? You could probably get set up for like 30 or 40 bucks with all like really nice tools that aren't uh, imported or you could probably spend 20 bucks and get all that same stuff off of Amazon. Solder is um, best used for pedals when it's really small. Can we see that? Uh, I'm currently using 0.8 millimeter. One millimeter is fine, but don't buy that big old plumber stuff that's that big around and then wonder why you can't solder your PCB with it. And I'm currently using uh, 60-40 and it contains 2.2% flux. So 60-40 rosin core is fine, or if you get stuff that contains flux, it just makes life a little easier for you. And other than that, this is the soldering iron that I enjoy using, which is a Hakko uh, FX888D. They're a little spendy. They're like $100 or are they $150? I forget, I think the price went down since I bought them, but the deal is, is that they're digital, the temperature is adjustable, and you can put a bunch of different tips on the iron. I just think they're good. This is too expensive if you're getting into your first one, and I totally don't think most people should buy one. I just run my iron every day, usually for a couple hours. So I recommend a Iron by Weller, which I believe is $40 on Amazon. And I believe they're a 40 watt, but just look on Amazon. It's like a $40 soldering station. It has the, the little part that plugs in the wall and then the stand with the sponge cleaner. And they're about 40 bucks, 40 watts, and they're not digital. You just, there's a little dial you turn to turn up the heat but that is what they stocked in all of the labs at the university that I went to and I have used them and they work great. So for 40 bucks, you can get a high quality tech grade soldering iron without breaking the bank and you'll be right on your way. If you got a little Radio Shack one, that's fine too. Just make sure that you get something that has a pretty small tip. We're working on PCBs, not plumbing pipes, right? Other than that, uh, let's say you're getting into it. You built a few pedals and you want to build a lot more pedals. Well, start collecting your parts drawers. You can get these at Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Amazon, um, you know, a little bit of everywhere. But a good electronics bench will have a bunch of these set up maybe on the wall to save 
space on your bench, but you basically just start separating out all your resistors and caps and things like that so that you can build fast. So that is my bench. And so thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully there was something in this video that was either educational to you or entertaining or possibly inspiring. And now you're gonna go build your first guitar effect pedal kit. Bass Fuss, Baz, Zizzy, Zizzy, Zizzy. Baz Fuss was the first pedal kit I built and I thought it was pretty cool. I bought that from Small Bear Electronics. So if you wanna build the same one that I did, there you go. Um, otherwise, I think a boost pedal, a one knob boost pedal. How about an LPB one would be a really cool build for somebody for their first uh, kit because it's usable. No, like everybody likes a boost. A boost on a pedal board is just fun to have and it's easy to build. So if you liked this video, you ought to hit the like button as I really appreciate it and subscribe to the channel. And why don't you leave me a comment below and let me know where you're watching from, maybe something you enjoyed about the video. Uh, how about an idea for a future video? And if you're gonna build a pedal kit or you wanna get into it, why don't you let me know below? I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I hope you're having a good week and thank you for watching the channel. I really appreciate all your support. And if you wanna keep up with everything that I'm doing with Fuzzlord Effects, go ahead and follow us on Instagram at FuzzLordEffect and you'll be able to see what's going on daily. Have a good week, y'all.